Thank you, President Healy, Susan Duffy, members of the platform party, governance, faculty, staff, and students. Thank you. It is such an honor to be welcomed into the Babson community. What a special place it truly is here. Class of 2016, congratulations. The finish line is almost in sight. But, you know, in the last 15 minutes, I got a glimpse into what your lives are like because I've heard that by tomorrow you've got to work on a preface and you've got to start your case study. So I got a glimpse into what life is like at Babson. Seriously, I have given one commencement speech in my life. It was at my own high school graduation in 1977. And here's how it began. In the words of a popular song, the road is long with many, I'm not gonna sing it, the road is long <laughs> with many a winding turn that leads us to who knows where, who knows when. Well, in the 39 years since then, my road has taken many a winding turn. And in the bends, I learned a skill that absolutely unlocked my leadership potential, diplomacy. Whatever exciting roads lie ahead for you, you're gonna have an important job to do as global diplomats. What do I mean by that? Well, if you're a CEO, and many of you are already CEOs, as a CEO, trust me, you are a diplomat. It takes incredible diplomacy to juggle the short-term and long-term demands of all of your many varied stakeholders as a CEO. If you're an entrepreneur and you build your own company, diplomacy is going to be the key to leading a team that can see the needs that your company can fill. And if you're in an NGO, you may think of your role as an activist, but you'll be far more effective in promoting change if you're a diplomat. And if you're a politician, in fact, if you're president, you will quickly realize that you have absolutely no power, none, without skillful, patient diplomacy. You've learned here at Babson, it's very clear, to experiment, to do things differently, to rethink how you will respond to the disruptive forces that challenge our society today. And you're fired up to run very fast ahead of that accelerating pace of change today. But I urge you to slow it down. Slow it down and pay attention to the disappearing art of diplomacy. Because disruption today is not just from technology redefining business. People are being disrupted today by the income inequality that is convulsing politics all around the world. People are afraid. And it's really natural for them to turn inward and want to look to surround themselves with people who look, think, and act just like themselves. I see it every day, as we all do in the UK as they debate Brexit, in the EU as it struggles with the waves of refugees, or even in our own presidential campaign here in the United States. Now, make no mistake, you will define your futures in this volatile world, and it will not require walls. What it will require is leaders like you, who see yourself as diplomats, with diplomacy at the core of your leadership, skilled at negotiating the creation of a better world for each of us. And I won't lie to you, diplomacy is brutally time consuming, and so you'll be tempted to ignore it, but it's worth every second. So I just wanna share briefly three important lessons that I've learned that I think can help you be great at diplomacy. First and foremost, Diplomacy takes courage, the courage to be who you are, authentically. Otherwise, you will never be trusted, and the trust is the foundation for everything good in life. I summoned my own true courage about five years ago when I came out of the closet as a leader who is gay. Thank you. Thank you. I came out because of gay teenagers, because of gay teenager, teenagers who are at such high risk of killing themselves. 
and taking their own lives because they've been rejected just for who they are. My message to them was, you're valuable because of your difference, not in spite of it. Life will get better. And that message came from my own experience. When I started in my profession in 1981, the field I entered was predominantly male, straight, full of extroverts, and they all had a political leaning pretty much different than my own. Yet as a woman, an introvert, different in so many ways from my peers, I've been fortunate to work in an organization that valued my perspectives that were different. So how does this story apply to you? Well, my friends, there are all kinds of closets. If you are openly gay, research says that 62% of you are going to go back into the closet as you begin your career, 62%. And whatever your sexual orientation, you are going to have a temptation to conform all along the way. Your instincts are going to tell you that success requires fitting in no matter what. Let me tell you, that instinct is wrong. Babson hasn't just equipped you with an entrepreneurial mindset. Babson has helped you discover who you are. And ultimately, the most valuable thing you can bring in any setting is exactly who you are. Someone who doesn't look, think, or act like anyone else. Someone with the courage to value difference both in yourself and in the people that you will lead. Before I came out just five years ago, I had no idea that EY was not getting the best of me. I had no idea. The world's not going to get the best of you unless you stay true to who you are. And don't forget that everyone around you wants to succeed by being who they are. Diplomats get that. Diplomats meet people where they are, whoever they are. Lesson number two. Having the courage to know who you are doesn't mean you know everything. And the best way to deal with that is really simple. Listen more than you talk. Introverts, you have an advantage here, I'm telling you. No leader today has all the answers. Answers are gathered from countless little pieces of information from each person you'll listen to and from each experience that you have. I learned this lesson when I was 19. I had landed a job as an intern at a General Motors factory in Kokomo, Indiana. My job was to supervise the assembly line, producing audio speaker systems for the cars. So picture the scene. I walk into the plant. The average age on the line was somewhere between 50 and 60 years old. I was younger than most of their daughters at 19. One look in their eyes said it all to me. Who does this kid think she is? And let's make sure she fails. So I decided by, to start by just listening. I sat with each of them, asking questions. Well, what are you doing? What do you like about it? What drives you crazy? How could we do this better? And over the summer, we worked to change to get some things together. And by August, we were running a zero defect line. We all succeeded. So by listening and getting all their perspectives out on the table, we built trust, we built commitment, we built buy-in, we created a shared sense of purpose, and all I did was to listen and empower them to think bigger, to challenge the status quo, and just to help knock the obstacles out of their way. Diplomacy brought us together and ensured that we succeeded. No leader today has all the answers, nor will you. So, meet people where they are and listen more than you talk. Be a diplomat. Lesson number three. Diplomats compromise, and they see it as a strength, not as a weakness. Now, let me challenge you. What is compromise? Is it a win-win solution and everybody goes away happy? That's not my experience. To me, compromise is when everyone is marginally unhappy with a solution, but agrees to the decision for the greater good. 
Each person or group gives up a little to get to a shared solution. Compromise is hard. It's going to be one of the hardest things you do if, if you do it well. I learned this firsthand in the 90s when I was in the Clinton administration as part of the Superfund effort to clean up toxic waste. The problem back then was that 88 cents of every dollar was going to pay environmental attorneys and only 12 cents of every dollar was going toward actually cleaning up toxic waste. My mission was to design a scheme to assign liability for the cleanup to each party involved, none of whom was legally responsible, but all of whom had a stake in the solution. Insurers, polluters, politicians, environmentalists, each one was at the table with a viewpoint. And each viewpoint was perfectly valid. My job was to question them, to listen, to keep digging, until we understood everyone's perspectives, but more importantly, until everyone believed that we understood their perspective. It took us two hard years to knit together a compromise working every day. Everyone was marginally unhappy, I can assure you of that, but they were all signed on to the solution. Problems cannot be solved without that kind of effort because problems cannot be understood without that kind of effort. As the pace of change accelerates and you find yourself wanting to run ahead as fast as you can, don't let the hard work of compromise lose out. Perfect your diplomatic skills and you will succeed and you will create all sorts of economic and social value. All right, I'd like to close with a final challenge. It's actually the best advice I ever got from my dad. He used to tell me a lot. He used to tell me, girl, you've been given gifts. Use them. But never get too full of yourself because you're going to fall on your face tomorrow. I loved my dad. Of course, what he meant was stay humble. But he also meant you're going to be successful. You will. But that's not good enough. Success only matters if you do significant things, things that matter to others. You don't have to change the world. You just have to work with the platform that you have to do things that matter. Today, I'm the Global Vice Chair of Public Policy at EY. That's my platform. That's my platform as a senior female executive in a global policy role. I can do things that help make a difference for women in business all around the world. That matters. As one of the most senior openly gay business executives in the world, I work with a handful of other leaders just like me and other companies. And there's only a handful of us. While we can't control a state or a country's laws or culture, we can control our workplaces. We can diplomatically exemplify respect tolerance, and inclusion for all people. And because the economies of our companies are bigger than the economies of many countries, what we do together truly matters. For you, your road ahead is long with many a winding turn. Whatever you do, whether you pursue liberty for a nation of people or you build your own company as an entrepreneur. Just remember three things, my fellow diplomats, three things. Never lose your courage to value difference and embrace it in yourself and in others. Listen more than you talk and know that compromise is rooted in strength, not in weakness. You will have ups and downs, you will. How you handle the downs will build character. How you handle the ups will tell the world a lot about who you are. There is one thing, one thing you have to get right, your integrity. Guard it like it's your most precious possession, because it is, and there are no do-overs. So. Class of 2016, as my dad would say, you've been given gifts, use them.
but success isn't good enough. Pay attention along the way to your significance. And whatever path you choose, be the global diplomats that Babson has helped you become to build a better world where people are more hopeful and opportunity is more equal. I know what you are about to do will matter. So use your gifts. Thank you very much, and again, congratulations. <laughs>